Welcome to NG Classes YouTube channel. In this video, we'll consider an example on properties of system. And the example considered here is y of t is equal to x of t by 2. So this is a continuous time system. And the task here is to test is this system linear, time invariant, memoryless, causal, and stable. So we'll test for all the properties and we'll start with the very first one. So we'll test the given system for linearity. So we would say that the, any system is linear if it follows the properties of superposition and homogeneity. So before we start with the linearity, we'll try to understand how the system behaves, what the nature of the system is. So for that what I do is I'll consider uh, the input x of t and the system with the operator h, I would get the output y of t. What is y of t is equal to? It is x of t by 2. Then what is the nature of the system? The nature of the system is wherever it finds t, it divides that time by 2. So that is the nature of the system. So I would repeat, wherever the system finds t, it replaces that with t by 2. That is the nature of the system. So with that understanding, we would consider linearity. To prove linearity property, I must need at least two inputs. So let those inputs be x1 of t and x2 of t. So next I would scale the first input by a1, second input by a2. So the next task is to add them up. Now being this as the input, give this to the system of operator h so that I'll get the output. I would call this as y1 of t. So what will be y1 of t? So I said the nature of the system, wherever it finds t, it replaces with t by 2. So therefore I would get a1, x1, so here it finds t. So I would get x1 of t by 2 plus a2, x2 of, here the t is there, so I would get t by 2. So this is what the first half. So next we'll consider the inputs independently, x1 of t. So I would give this straight away to the system of operator h. I would get the output as y dash of t. So what is the output now? It is x1 of t divided by 2. And once I scale this by factor a1, I would get it as a1 x1 of t by 2. So this process is done after scaling. Next I would consider the second input, I would call it as x2 of t, I would call, I would get this to the system and I will get the output as y double dash of t. So what is my output here? It is x2 of t divided by 2. So after scaling this by a factor of a2, I will get a2 x2 of t by 2. So this is what I get. The next task is to add y dash of t and y double dash of t. Whatever I get, I would call this as y2 of t, which is equal to y dash of t plus y double dash of t. So what is that equal to? It is a1 x1 of t by 2 plus a2 x2 of by 2. So this is what I get. The next task is to compare y1 of t with y2 of t. The task is to test whether these two input, these two outputs are equal or not. So by comparing I would say that these two outputs are equal. Hence I would conclude that the given system is linear. So with that it is end of linearity property and we concluded the system is linear. So now I'll consider the second property that is time invariant. The definition of time invariant is that a system is said to be time invariant if, an, if a shift in the input leads to an identical time shift in the output. So there is one statement, a shift in the input must lead to an identical time shift in the output. So I'll divide it into two halves, two halves and I'll consider the first one, a shift in the input. Later I'll consider a shift in the output. A shift in the input means input is x of t. Shift in the input is x of t minus t naught. 
So now I will give this input to the system of operator H so that I will get the output y of t. So what is my output here? So the nature of the system is that wherever it finds t, it replaces t with t by 2. So I would get x of t by 2. So here there is a t, it replaces with t by 2 minus t naught. So just be careful here, it is not t naught by 2 because I said it replaces t with t by 2, not t naught. It's only time t, not t naught, not anything else. So this is first half of the statement y of t is equal to x of t by 2 minus t naught. So this is what I get. So now I'll consider the second half of the statement that is shift in the output. That is y of t minus t naught. What is this equal to? So to write this first I'll write x of uh, sorry the given system y of t is equal to x of t divided by 2. So from this I need to get y of t minus t naught. How do I get? by replacing every t with t minus t naught. So I would get y of t minus t naught equal to x of here there is a t so I have to replace that with t minus t naught so divide everything by 2. So this is what I get in the second half. So now I need to compare y of t with y of t minus t naught. I need to test whether these two are equal or not. By comparing, I could say clearly say that these two are not equal. Hence, I conclude that the given system is time variant. The output varies with the time. It is not constant. That's what I say. The system is time variant. So now I'll consider the third property that is memoryless. The task is to determine is this system memoryless or does it have any memory. If I, if I want to say the given system is memoryless, the output at any given time should depend on input at that time only. That means present value of the output should depend on present value of the input. In case if the system has the memory, the output at any given time can depend on past or future values of the input. So that's what the system, that was the system which have memory. So now let's let's test that. The system is y of t is equal to x of t divided by 2. So for example, I want to find the value of the output at t equal to 1. So I'll put t equal to 1. So I'll get y of 1 is equal to x of 1 by 2, that is x of 0.5. So present value of the output is y of 1. To find this, I must know its past value of the input x of 1 by 2 or x of 0.5. That means it is depending on the past values of the input. So hence, I would say that the system has memory. So I hope this point is clear. So I concluded the system has memory because it can depend on past or the future values. Hence I would say the system has memory. So moving on, the next property is to test the system for causality. So the definition of causal is that a system, any system is said to be causal if the output at any given time can depend on the present or the past values of the input. So I would write the present or the past values of the input but should never on future values of the input. In case if it depends on future values of the input, I would say the system is non-causal. So to prove that, let's consider the system. The system is y of t is equal to x of t divided by 2. So I, I have to test, does it depend on any of the future values? For that, let me test for t equal to 2. y of 2 is equal to x of 2 by 2, that is 1. So present value of the output is y of 2. To find this, I must know the past value of the input. So can I disprove it? That means does it depend on any future value? Let me test that. Let me test for few negative values. 
let me test for t equal to minus 1 let's see what do I get if I put t equal to minus 1 it is y of minus 1 is equal to x of minus 1 by 2 that is minus 0.5 I call it as minus 0.5. So y of minus 1 is the present value of the input and x of minus 0.5 is the future value of the input. To find the present value of the output, I must know its future values. Hence, I would say that the given system is non-causal as it depends on the future values of the input. The answer is non-causal. Moving on, the last property to test is stability. The task here is to test is the given system a BIBO stable. BIBO stands for bounded input, bounded output. So the definition of this is for every bounded input, is it producing a bounded output? That's what I need to test. In simple words, I'll make the input finite. Does every finite input produces a finite output? That's what I need to test. If that is the case, I would say the system is BIBO stable or else it is unstable. For that, I'll consider the input x of t. I'll consider the magnitude of this. I'll make this finite. I'll make it less than or equal to mx where mx is any finite positive number which is less than infinity. So what is the output? Output is y of t. Magnitude of that I'll consider. So what is that equal to? It is equal to magnitude of x of t by 2. So is this less than or equal to my which is less than infinity? I would say it is yes. So make input finite x of t. What is the output? x of t by 2. The value of x of t at t equal to t by 2. That's what x of t by 2 means. So if x of t is finite, x of t by 2 is also a finite number. So by making input finite, I would get the output also finite. Hence I would say the given system is BIBO stable. So, so here I have tested uh, for, all, for five different properties. So just to brief it up, I'll go back. The system being considered here is y of t is equal to x of t by 2. We have tested this for linearity. Yes, I got the answer to be yes. The system is linear. I have tested this for time invariance. I got the answer. It is not. I got it to be time variant. And we also tested this for memoryless. No, it is not memoryless. It has some memory. And we have also tested for causality. The answer was no. It is non-causal. And we have tested this for stability and we got the answer. Yes, the system is stable. So this is all about the properties of the systems. Thanks for watching.